Okay, welcome back. This is uh, chapter three of The Language of the Goddess by Maria Gimbutas. And this chapter, we're going to focus on what she calls meanders, also known as spirals. So here's a, a swastika image, and then here's a spiral, and a spiral, and chevrons, right? So what does the blurb says? The blurb says, Upper Paleolithic ivory figurine carved with meanders, the front marked with M's, and a large pubic triangle. So here is the chevron, which is a symbol for the vulva. Right, and then we have here this iconic depiction of a vulva, a very large pubic triangle. So this whole thing is like bam, bam, look to right here. And it's surrounded by spirals. And then up here we have more chevrons. So chapter three, meanders and water birds. Its origin in the upper Paleolithic and association with the water bird. The meandering snake and continuous meander first appeared in the art of the Upper Paleolithic. From the very beginning, the meander was not used merely decoratively. It was a symbol, a metaphor for water. It is meaningfully associated with the chevron or on... Let me just check if I'm recording. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> it is meaningful asso me meaningfully associated with the chevron on bird-shaped female figurines whose posteriors are engraved with meanders, while their fronts are marked with chevrons, M's, and central triangle. Figure 37 on the next page. Here's figure 37. So this was that image we were just looking at now in several several versions, right? So this is the front, B, and then this is the side, and this is the other side, or maybe this is the bottom and this is the side, let's see. Figure 37, like its sister symbol, the V sign, the meander emerges in the upper Paleolithic. From the first, it's associated with the bird goddess. One, the posterior of this bird-shaped ivory figurine. She's claiming that this is bird-shaped, interesting. I don't really see the bird shape, but okay. Um, the posterior of this orthomorphic ivory figurine is carved with meanders, while the front is marked with chevrons, M's, and a large pubic triangle. Two and three are two other figures, right? And these look like seals to me. Um, okay, let's go back to the text. Um, the ivory plaque from Mazine also includes both meander and chevron, figure 38. Let's look at this ivory plaque from the zine, figure 38. Wow. Wow, so this was a piece of jewelry, right, that would go around your wrist. And it's a, a combination of chevron and meander combined in this upper Paleolithic ivory plaque. There are three perforations at the end. So those three perforations, obviously they're used for, this is jewelry. This is a piece of jewelry made out of ivory, mammoth ivory. Someone killed a mammoth and carved its bone into this this thing to go around your wrists. And what are the symbols on that thing but the symbols of the goddess? And this is 18,000 to 15,000 BC. All right, um, going back. The symbolic connection between the two reflects the natural affinity between fowl and water creature and habitat. All right, so now let's read uh, the next section on ducks and bird goddess sculptures. The aqueous symbolic import of the meander is obvious when it occurs on figurines representing ducks or other birds on an image of the goddess wearing a bird mask on her temples. The meander design usually appears in association with the V or chevron as in the upper Paleolithic on anthropomorphic bird sculptures or on elaborate effigy vases of the goddess figure 39. Innumerable banked and winged figurines are marked with meanders figure 40. Okay, let's look at figures 39 and 40. Um, here's figure 39. In the Neolithic and Copper Age, meanders mark bird goddess figurines, like this terracotta duck. I could see that being a duck, a duck-faced deity. Her skirt, right, so you can see there's this chevron necklace skirt thing going on. Her skirt and crown of her head bear white encrusted meanders and Vs. She's identified by the medallion on the V-shaped necklace, right, V-shaped necklace and the medallion. This is a goddess. 
and there her base is made up of meanders. All right, and figure 40, which was mentioned, whoa, wow. She has the same medallion, and there's the meander over the womb, meander on the back, plus this comb shape. Um, wow, look at those eyes. This Finca figurine, majestically sitting on a throne, is marked with a meander, chevron, and brush in front and back. Brush in front and back. Meander front and back. Chevron front and back. The medallion in front bespeaks her importance. Typically, her mask has no mouth, but the nose is massive, right? So she's, this, is, this is a typical Vinca figurine. No mouth, massive nose. Parallel lines above and below, large almond-shaped eyes. Preparations are for attachments, not preserved. These preparations, wow. So you could, you could tie it to something. Okay, back to the text over here. Significantly, So innumerable beaked winged figures are marked with meanders. So figure 40 is one example of, of many just like that, hundreds. Significantly, temples and altar pieces of the goddess are solidly covered with them, as on the clay temple model from Vadastrara, Western Romania, 5000 BC. Figure 41, okay. Let's look at figure 41. Whoa. Whoa. The temple models and altarpieces belonging to shrines of goddesses are often solidly co covered with meanders. Look at that. Wow. This thought-provoking example depicts the goddess's sphere as the watery realm to which an entrance at the bottom has been provided. Look at that door. Bastrata group in the Vinca culture, 5200 to 5000 BC, Romania. Wow that door to the goddess realm and where is it located notably it's located in in the pubic area so this time it's rectangular not triangular but if you look at the the model you can see that it's anthropomorphic right here's here's the the V marking the neck um, this is a, a temple model so there are a number of these things that uh, resemble temples that were found inside temples. So this is a temple model, an altarpiece belonging to a shrine to the goddess. So she's she's claiming that this is both anthropomorphic in shape and also that it resembles a temple and that the temples themselves were anthropomorphic. That argument comes later. I'm assuming it here. Um, this is a 7,000 year old artifact. Wow, okay. Going back. Um, Okay. Significantly, temples and altarpieces of the goddess are solidly covered with them, as on the clay. As on the clay temple model from Vadastara, Western Romania, 5200 BC. Clearly, the realm of the goddess is the mythic watery sphere. The theme occurs in various culture groups and phases. An elaborate example is from Tiziza Valley. The enthroned goddess of Segar Tukosevez is dressed in a meander costume, decorated with panels of meandroid design, including several sets of ingeniously executed meander bands and squares complemented with bands of zigzags. Her sign, a large V in relief, marks her throne. Figure 42. Here's figure 42. The enthroned goddess wears an elaborate meander costume, which is bordered in zigzags, connected Vs. Marks her throne, 5000 BC. Wow. So there's this enthroned goddess. Look at that patterning. Meander, 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 meander. Spiral, spiral. Whoa. Here's the front of her. <laughs> Look at that clothing, holy crap. And and so there's here's an interesting thing that comes up a lot. She doesn't have a head, and so her breasts double as eyes, right? So this whole thing is the head, which is not present here. 
and yet the thing is a body, right? And so there's this point that's made over and over with these sculptures that the part is the whole. So the whole represents a part, the body represents the head, the head represents the body. Um, talk about that for mind-body disconnect. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back. Um, I'm sorry that it takes me so long to navigate around this. The theme occurs in various culture groups and phases. An elaborate example is from the Tsiza Valley. An enthroned goddess of Svevartukos is dressed in a meander costume, decorated with panels of meandroid design. This was the image we were just looking at, including several sets of ingeniously executed meander bands and squares complementing with bands of zigzags. Her sign, a large V in relief, marks her throne. <laughs> Other finds at this very rich settlement include anthropomorphic vases with the face of a divinity flanked by meanders on the neck, meandroid and zigzag designs in a number of panels separated by trilines and engraved on the globular bodies. Back to the top. On seals, oh, nope, more, more, okay. The association of female images with meanders continued into the Iron Age. At Simponto near Manfrodia, southern, southeastern Italy, where Danuni and Stellae are usually decorated with, bear, with panels of various meandroid designs, a number of figurines with, with beaked faces from proto-geometric and geometric periods in Greece were decorated with panels of, meander, of a meander design. Section 3.3 on seals, spindle whorls, plaques, and ritual objects. The meander, sometimes with a distinct snake head in the center, is known from the Neolithic and Copper Age. So meander with a snake head in the center. So the meander itself is iconic of the snake, the spiraling shape. The meander, sometimes with a distinct snake head in the center, is known from the Neolithic and Copper Age to excise on seals, spindle whorls, plaques, and cult objects. Figure 43. Let's look at figure 43. There's the meander. Like the symbols of Chevron, like the symbols of the Chevron family, meanders also appear on seals and as individual signs on ceramics. In this context, they probably function as conceptual markers or designators, part of the old European symbolic language. One, Koros seal, so this is a seal two red painted meander on a dimini vase and three a kekuteni seal okay let's go back Um, this meander, sometimes with a distinct snake head in the center, is known from the Neolithic and Copper Age, excised on seals, spindle whorls, plaques, and cult objects. It was also painted on vases as an individual sign amidst an all-over meander design. Cult vessels were frequently decorated with meanders over a stereated or net design background. Snake heads protruding from the corners were also marked with the meander, as on the illustrated example in figure 44 from Romania. Let's look at figure 44. Here's figure 44. So here's a temple model, probably. Triangular ritual vessel. It's a ritual vessel with white encrusted meander pattern over a net design background and over stake protomes at the centers. So she's saying that these are snake heads. Um, it's from the Vinca culture. So here's the meander. There's a vessel in here. It holds things with three snake heads in triangle shape. Okay, going back. All right, I think we did this whole page now. You really have to jump around with this book. It's uh, quite a book. Okay. So we finished that page. We did this page. Remember, this was a vulva, and this was this um, this uh, jewelry boards. And here's an image of the 
duck goddess, and here's this Vinca figurine. Okay, let's read this bit of text here. Figure 3.4, as a decorative motif on ceramics. The meander design reached a peak popularity during the Copper Age. Meanders were incised or painted in rhythmic patterns on large vases and on the interior surface of dishes. The motif is particularly elaborate on Vinca, Langel, Peresti, and Kekuteni ceramics. Symbolic use was distinguished by the customary framing, while variations of the basic design proliferated in bands over the neck and body of the vessel. Wow. So there's that goddess enthroned from 7,000 years ago. Okay, and here we are, the last page of the chapter. No more images, I think. From the evidence examined above, we deduce that the V, chevron, X, zigzag, net, and meander, which appear on large on a large repertory of artifacts, seals, sacrificial containers, anthropomorphic vases, plaques, spindle walls, loom weights, altars, temple models, schematic figurines, articulated statuettes, etc., etc., are associated with the bird goddess or with the bird as her epiphany. Many objects on which these signs and symbols were engraved or painted served in her cult. V and X are her signs. Nets, meanders, and running stakes, snake spiral bands, especially on water containers, link her with the cosmic waters, which are her element. Greek Athena's name itself refers to a containing receptacle of vessel. Karen I, Karen Yi. The bird goddess was the source and dispenser of life-giving moisture, an early and endooming, enduring human preoccupation. As a water bird, she united heaven and earth, and her terrestrial home was probably believed to be mirrored by a celestial, watery realm. This cosmology also had a temporal component related to her annual migration. The new beginnings of life in the spring were heralded by her reappearance in Europe, and the long quiescent season by her departure. Further discussion will deal with the significance of specific parts of the goddess's body in her capacity as source, the breasts, mouth, and eyes. So these first three chapters were on three basic symbols, the chevron, the V, the M, which is the squiggle, and now the meander, the spiral. The next three chapters are going to focus on her body parts as depicted, her breast, her mouth, and her eyes. Thanks for joining me.